Who is the Dynasty RB2 right now? Jonathan Taylor is far and away the consensus RB1, but after him, it's like a mixed bag of players that all have qualified resumes to earn that RB2 title. Justin May, DLF ADP, Najee Harris, Javante Williams, Brees Hall, and even Christian McCaffrey were all drafted as the RB2 in at least one of our mock drafts that feed that ADP. I even posted a poll on Twitter asking this question, and DeAndre Swift has been the voting favorite there. So let's run through each player's resume to see if we can definitively answer this question of who is the Dynasty RB2. So let's start with the ADP favorite from May, which was Najee Harris. And Najee finished as the RB3 in his rookie 2021 season last year, primarily through health and massive volume. He led all running backs in targets and receptions, and only Jonathan Taylor had more carries, which equated to a league-high 381 touches. And on that much volume, it's almost impossible to not be a top five fantasy running back. He started the year off pretty hot too, as he finished as a top 12 running back in eight of his first 10 games, but a lot of those weeks were back-end RB1 scoring. In fact, though he finished as the RB3 on the season, he only scored as a top five running back four times. That was the same number of games as Derrick Henry and Christian McCaffrey, who both played less than half the season. It also was the same number of games as DeAndre Swift, who also played in 13 games, three fewer games than the running back to Austin Eckler and the RB4, Joe Mixon, and only one game more than Nick Chubb, James Conner, Leonard Fournette, Alvin Kamara, and Rashad Penny. There really wasn't anything special he did last year outside of, again, tremendous volume and health. That's why he finished as the RB3 on the season, but was actually the RB8 in points per game. However, health and volume are two things that are very rare to find together among running backs today, and there's really no reason to assume that the volume would go away or that his health is going to deteriorate anytime soon outside of like a major random injury. He is also 24 years old, which is really not a problem right now, but as 2023 and 2024 go by and he's still in his rookie deal, the Dynasty community is going to start seeing age 25 and age 26, and we know that's when the fear sets in for running backs in Dynasty. He's still two years away from being 26 years old, but just know that as we get closer and closer, it becomes much more of a talking point when talking about his dynasty value. Now let's move over to the RB2 favorite from my Twitter poll, which was DeAndre Swift. Now Swift and a couple other players in the running for the dynasty RB2 are much more of a projection of the future than what they've actually done so far. And Swift has been pretty good for fantasy in just his short two year career, but he has yet to finish a season as a fantasy RB1. But he was well on his way last year though, as he was the RB5 through the first 11 weeks before getting injured in the first half of week 12. Through those 11 weeks, he had nearly 1,000 total yards, 53 receptions, and he was only seven PPR points behind Najee Harris, despite seeing over 40 fewer touches. He is another Alvin Kamara, another Austin Eckler, in that he's never going to be a real workhorse on the ground and may never see significantly more than 200 carries in a season, but his receiving volume is what makes him elite. He saw 57 targets in his rookie season, then 78 last year despite still missing four games. That was a league leading six targets per game last year among running backs, which over 17 games is a pace of over 100 targets. And if you're a running back, getting 100 plus targets and another 150 plus rush attempts, you're going to be a top 10 back in PPR formats. It's almost impossible not to. And with some good touchdown efficiency, which he's shown so far, he can do that. And that increases your odds of being a top five fantasy running back, a la like what we've seen from Alvin Kamara and Austin Eckler. The main issue that you could have with Swift is just the team that he plays for and the direction that they're heading in. They have a new offensive coordinator in Ben Johnson who assisted in the Lions' success at the end of the season when they scored 29 or more points in four of their last six games. The Lions also drafted Jamison Williams as a vertical threat and their hope to be the wide receiver one for the future. They also signed DJ Chark to play on the opposite side of Williams. So all of a sudden, the Lions' offense is looking pretty dangerous and people are wondering if Swift's receiving role from last year is going to take a hit as more receiving options become available to Jared Goff. To be honest with you, I'm not all that concerned considering that I want the Lions to be a good team as I would believe that that bodes well for all of the fantasy options on the team, including DeAndre Swift. Goff is also not afraid to check down to his running back as we saw last year with Swift, but also multiple 80 plus target seasons for Todd Gurley on the Rams. Swift is very good, and I think that the Lions know that, so in order to help them win games, they'll put the ball in his hands more often than not, and that should be good for us for fantasy football. Lastly, let's talk about Javante Williams, who climbed in ADP every single month since September last year up till April of this year, peaking as the Dynasty RB3 
nearly tied with Najee for the RB2 spot. And that was until the news of Melvin Gordon returning to Denver, which spoiled everything that we had hoped and dreamed for Javante Williams in 2022. But there's still so much to love about Javante, and you're watching this video now. At the beginning of June, you know who and what Javante Williams is and can become. However, there is that real fear of what Melvin Gordon could do to Javante's usage and value, and that fear translated to a drop in Dynasty ADP from April to May, and also a drop in his best ball redraft ADP from a back-end first-round pick to a back-end second-round pick. The other fear is new head coach Nathaniel Hackett, who is coming from Green Bay, where we also saw a pretty 50-50 split last year at running back between Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. But if you look at Hackett's history, even dating back to being an offensive coordinator in Buffalo in 2013, everywhere he goes, a strong rushing attack follows. In 2013, Hackett split work between Fred Jackson and C.J. Spiller, who each saw over 200 carries, with Jackson getting a little bit more of a receiving workload. In 2017, Hackett was the offensive coordinator for Jacksonville, who gave a rookie Leonard Fournette over 300 touches, with the other three running backs all combining for the other 250 touches. 2019 with the Packers, Aaron Jones saw 236 attempts, nearly 70 targets, while Jamal Williams saw 150 opportunities. 2020, again, Jones led the way with 201 attempts and 63 targets, while Williams and Dylan combined for over 160 attempts and 37 targets. To be honest, Hackett is a good thing for Javante Williams because Hackett knows how to create an effective rushing attack and has worked with some really, really good backs over the last decade. It just comes down to how does he view Melvin Gordon? Does he think both are similarly capable and they split their workload again like he did in Buffalo or Green Bay last year? Or does he view Gordon like a Jamal Williams and give Javante a bigger piece of the pie like he did with Aaron Jones in 2019 and 2020? My hope, and I think a lot of us out there hope that it is the latter, which would still make Javante a stud fantasy running back and with some extra touchdowns, an elite running back in 2022 and beyond. He also has the benefit of being the youngest of the three players that I've talked about so far, being over a year younger than DeAndre Swift and over two years younger than Najee Harris. So he has a strong case to be the RB2 just on age alone, based on where he could be production-wise next year, still at only 23 years old. The only other players to receive votes for the RB2 in both ADP and in my poll were Brees Hall and Christian McCaffrey. And I don't really consider either major contender since McCaffrey is going to be 26 today, actually. So happy birthday, Christian McCaffrey. And with his recent injury history, I'm actually surprised he's even still in the conversation. I love him for redraft, but in Dynasty, it's just a scarier bet to make at that price should those injuries continue. As for Brees Hall, he's the shiny new toy this year as the clear-cut RB1 and 1.01 in this class. He's a very good prospect. He's not one of the best prospects we've seen in recent years, but he's still very, very good. And I don't think that we should be crowning him just yet, though, as we need to see how the Jets plan to use him and just what that offense in general looks like. So to answer the question of who is the Dynasty RB2 right now in June, my answer is whoever's cheaper. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that that's a real cop-out answer, but it's true. I don't want to be making that decision between the three of them first in a startup draft. If you already have one of the three, what I would try to do is see if you can go to one of the other two and get a little something extra on top. You're still in the same value tier and probably production tier as well. And if you can quote unquote tier down from one to another and add like a third round pick or even a late second if somebody really loves your player, I do that easily. If you wanna know my dark horse pick for another contender by the end of the year, I think Travis Etienne has a great chance to gain significant value in 2022. I mean, I'm basically projecting him for a DeAndre Swift type of usage. And if we see him fully healthy with that type of workload, I think he'll easily jump a lot of the aging veterans that are in that late RB1 range and possibly be a top five dynasty running back by the end of the year. Honestly, though, the funny part about this discussion is that none of it probably matters as this time next year, the actual dynasty RB2 will just be Bijan Robinson based on the hype that he's already getting in college. He'll probably end up in the discussion with like Zeke, Barkley, Jonathan Taylor in terms of that echelon of running back prospects. And if that's the case, he's your 1.01 next year easily and a top five dynasty running back probably off the rip, if not top three. But let me know down in the comments who you guys are taking as your dynasty RB2 or if you're as indifferent as I am to the big three. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesome content, and then let Justin explain to you why Travis Etienne is going to be awesome this year and beyond for Dynasty.